Hey everybody, welcome to this week's YouTube video. In this week's video, I'm gonna be covering uh, my basic Photoshop workflow, super simple workflow that's gonna allow you to create stunning images uh, in just a few clicks and a few minutes here and there. Photoshop is a super complicated program, and I'm just gonna be showing you some of the basics that I like to use in order to create great photos um, that I use on pretty much every photo that I edit. Now, of course, there is gonna be more advanced techniques that I'm not gonna cover in this video, but this video covers all of the basic techniques that I use on every photo. So I highly recommend that you pull up an image of your own, you pause this tutorial as we go along, and you apply these same effects to your photo um, and adjust the sliders to make them look good on your photo, but follow along with my workflow on a photo of your own. So if you guys wanna go ahead and pull up your photo, go ahead and pause this right now because we will be starting the tutorial right after this. So the first thing that we wanna do is go ahead and open the image in Photoshop, whether you open it from Lightroom or drag and drop into Photoshop, um, just open it into Photoshop however you normally would do so. Uh, likely it's gonna open up and say background with a lock on it. We can go ahead and remove that lock. Um, and then the first thing that I wanna do is actually turn this into a smart object. And there's a lot of reasons why I like to do that. It's not super important as to what those reasons are other than the fact that it is a less destructive way to edit your photos. So if I do wanna go back and change something at the beginning, it's much easier for me to do so. So in order to convert that to a smart object, you go up to layer, uh, go down to smart objects, and then go to convert smart object while you're selected on that background layer. And that should take a second to load out. It'll go ahead and create the smart object and uh, you will notice that it will have a little icon in the corner here once it's loaded out, and that's how you know that you've correctly created the smart object. Okay, perfect. As you can see, we've got this little icon now that indicates that this is a smart object. So the first thing that I can do now is go up to Filter and Camera Raw Filter. This is always the first step I take in Photoshop. However, if you edited your images in Lightroom beforehand, um, your changes will actually carry over if you open from Lightroom as a smart object into Photoshop. So you can do that and you won't have to do this step, but otherwise, if you just pop your image into Photoshop, this is the first step that I always take. I'm just gonna go down and adjust some basic sliders. I'll add a little bit of contrast, reduce the highlights, increase the shadows, um, and just do a bunch of basic tweaks here. You likely already know how to do this, so I'm not gonna talk you through exactly why I'm doing everything that I'm doing, um, but this is kind of what I like to do. And you can go through and change everything that you want. I usually don't mess with the curve. Um, sometimes I will do the detail, uh, the sharpening, do a little bit of capture sharpening. So sometimes I'll zoom in here, increase the sharpening a bit. Uh, I'm gonna hold Alt and Option on masking. And white is going to show what's being sharpened. Black is showing what's not being sharpened. So I want a good selection of the edges. Gonna bring my detail to 100, drop my radius all the way, and then increase the sharpening. You can see right there, it does pretty good. You can actually hit, uh, press and hold on this eye to toggle what the effect is doing. It's super subtle, but it is making a little bit of a difference. Um, I don't do much in the color mixer. There's a little bit better way to do this in Photoshop later. Um, I've played a little bit with the color grading um, in Photoshop, but generally I'm not doing a whole lot. Mostly I'll do that in Lightroom. Um, I'm not gonna do anything on the optics, nothing on geometry, uh, nothing on effects, and nothing on calibration. So once that's done, you can go ahead and click OK. And that's just really the way that you're gonna prime your photo and prepare it for more advanced edits later. So just kind of get it to a good spot. This photo is already pretty good as a raw file, but if you shot your file really dark or if it was a scene with a high dynamic range, you might need to make some more changes in that. So next step that I usually take is to go up and open this in the on one effects. Um, I go up to filter on one, on one effects. Now this is a program that you have to purchase. Um, it, I believe it's between 50 and hundred dollars depending on if the sale price is on or not. I'll leave a link in the uh, description down below that you can pick this up at. I'll leave you a discount code as well. So I really like on one for some of the filters that they allow you to use. It actually functions, functions as a full service uh, editor. You can do everything in it but for this tutorial, I'm just gonna be using it as a plugin to Photoshop. If you don't have it and don't wanna fork out the money, don't worry, you can go ahead and just skip this step, but if you are looking for something, um, I really do like this program, and it's a lot better than the Knit Collection. For those of you that have heard of the Knit Collection before, it's much, much better, uh, less buggy, and I do like the filters a little bit more. So anyways, the first thing that I wanna do is go ahead and add filter. Uh, the first one that I like is the Sunshine, and usually I will 
just kind of drop the amount. The warmth, saturation, and glow is usually pretty good at default. You can see that just really helps bring out the brightness of the spot that is getting hit by sunshine. So that looks good to me. I'm just going to leave that as is. The next one that I like is the dynamic contrast. Uh, I like to zero out these sliders, and they always start at 15 and 20 on medium and large and zero on small. Um, on this one, I like to click to zoom in once while I'm watching what happens. So you can see this is just increasing the dynamic contrast, which is just a really fine-tuned contrast, similar to clarity, but a little bit different and a little more targeted. So I'm just going to increase these. Usually less than 10 points for all of them is good. And you can toggle that maybe a little less on the large. And I'm just doing this to taste. It's really quite simple. Go ahead and click on the screen to zoom back out. Last thing that I like to use is their glow filter. And one thing I like about this glow filter is that I can actually select one of the presets. Um, sometimes I'll click through and see what I like. On this one, I'm guessing that probably normal is going to be about good. Maybe we want to go lighter and then reduce the amount, actually. And let's toggle that. And that just really softens out the photo. This is a really great feature for sunset photos um, where you've got really nice clouds and whatnot. And I do occasionally use it on a photo like this where there is some nice light. So those are the three filters I mainly use. I can go ahead and click done. And the nice thing about using it on a smart object in Photoshop is that when I click done, this is gonna ship right back over to Photoshop as its own little layer on that smart object. So I can come back and edit this at any point in my image. I can just double click and it will reopen in on one. So it's really great because I don't have to do anything by sending it back myself. You can see here I've got on one effects 2021 and the camera off filter are the two things that I've applied to our smart object. So uh, now what I'm gonna do is go ahead and walk through kind of the, the basic things that I do to pretty much every photo. And the first thing that I do is go up here to the adjustment layers and I am going to bring up a color balance. Color balance is your go-to for fixing the color tones in an image. This one looks all right in the highlights here, um, but in the shadows, it is a little blue. So the nice thing about doing this in Photoshop is that I can actually go up here to the tone and I can tone the shadows. I wanna warm those up a little bit. And you can see that it does work in quite fast. And maybe add a little more magenta. And I'm just watching these shadows down here and I'm just trying to neutralize them a touch. Maybe add a little bit of red. Maybe add a couple more points there and just subtle changes. Toggle that. Okay, and that's looking much better. Um, I, But now that I'm looking at it, I do realize I like a little bit of that blue look just because it does kind of help bring out this cool, snowy, fresh snow vibes in the desert here. So what I'm actually gonna do, um, I like what this is doing, but it is a little strong. I'm gonna go ahead and go to the opacity and I'm gonna just drop it just a touch, about 60%. I'm really liking what that's doing. That's looking great. So this is my go-to uh, on all my photos. Kind of the first step that I take is to go in and hit this color balance. And that's going to allow me to balance the colors and make the image look really great. And so the next step that I like to do is go in and use this hue saturation. Um, this one is great for affecting colors. So the first thing that I see is I want to make this blue a little less saturated down here. We balance the color well, but I do think that the shadows are a little saturated. So I can actually go up here where it says master, go down to blues, and I can reduce that blue saturation. You can see I could bring it all the way to nothing. It doesn't look very good if I do that, um, but you can see the difference that this is making. So, so I'm watching the photo as I slide this here, and I can toggle this down here, and that's looking pretty good. And that looks good to me. Now, the other thing that I want to do is adjust the yellows and kind of brighten up these yellow oranges. And I want to make sure that I'm making a good selection of the color. So one thing that you can do in this hue saturation is actually select this eyedropper tool and I can click and that is going to make it so that the selection is exactly the color I clicked on and similar colors. Um, and you can see that here, the what's being selected 100% is everything in between this, um, little bar on the left side and this one on the right. So this is what's being selected is right in here. And now I can go ahead and increase the saturation and you can see that's just affecting those yellows. So just bring this up to taste. About right there feels right to me. 
So super simple color changes. Uh, one thing I am noticing is that this over here is now getting a little too saturated. So I can go ahead and grab my brush tool with a black brush and I'm gonna paint on this mask. And I'm just gonna paint this out. And if you have not yet figured out layer masks, I highly recommend um, watching a video tutorial on that. They're really actually not that complicated and it's super important, but the gist of it is that black conceals white reveals. So everything that's black on my layer mask is being hidden from this adjustment layer while everything that's white is being shown. So everything is shining through on this adjustment layer except for what's on this rock, meaning that I'm not increasing the saturation of that rock. So that looks good. Now, the last thing that I usually do at the very beginning is to go ahead and bring up a curves layer. And this curve basically works. Uh, we're going to add some contrast to the scene. And the way that this works is this is a graph of all of the lightness values of the pixels in the scene. So you can see most of my image is in the darks area, but we do have a little bit of brightness. So it's likely that this sun here um, is somewhere in this range or brighter. So uh, what you probably have seen a lot of photographers do is use this simple S curve to create contrast because basically what this is doing is darkening the darker pixels and brightening the brighter pixels. Uh, for this image, I don't feel like I need to darken the darker pixels, but I do want to brighten the brighter pixels. So what I can do is click and drag up here on the curves um, or on the line to create a curve. But the problem is you can see it's increasing everything. So what I can do is click in the center and make another little selection here, and I can just bring this back down. So now you can see that these darker pixels aren't being selected nearly as much as these brighter pixels. And I'm just going to adjust this and I'll toggle this. Now you can see that we've popped these, this sunlight on the trees and on the rock. And that is it. We haven't really affected these darks much. So that's a really effective way to use the curves. There's infinite different ways you can use this. You can add points in as many spots as you want. Uh, you can do crazy things with it. So I highly recommend just sitting down on some of your photos and just playing with the curves layer. It's, it's a super great layer. There's so many different options and things you can do with it. And that's really um, one of the things that separates the, the pros from the amateurs in landscape photography is people that really understand how to use this, this curves adjustment. So these are really the three layers that you need to understand in order to use Photoshop. Now on other photos, I'll do crazy things like I'll dodge and burn or um, there's a thousand other effects that you could possibly use, but these are the effects that I'm gonna use on pretty much every photo. So I'm gonna kinda show you how I would wrap up this image because this image I don't feel needs a lot of editing. One thing that I highly recommend is don't get caught up over editing your images. Once it, the image looks good, uh, it's fine. Don't try and make something from nothing. You can see that I haven't changed this that much from the original image, but that is totally fine with me. I want to maintain a realistic look and feel. So what I want to do here um, next is actually do a little spot removal. You can see I've got some spots in the sky and that is very easy to do by clicking uh, to create a new layer here. I can title this spot removal just by double clicking and I'm going to use my spot healing brush. I can change the size using the open or closing bracket, which is diagonal to the delete key. And I'm just going to hit all these little spots that I see in the sky. And this is a really easy tool to use for any spots or blemishes or anything you want to correct. And just make sure that everything that you'd like to fix is gone. I don't think there's anything down here. That looks good. Now I recommend doing this more towards the beginning or towards the end of your photo. It's not ideal to do it in the middle um, because we will have to go back and redo this if we wanted to affect any of the layers below it. But it's fine because we are almost wrapping up here and this photo isn't super invested anyways. But if you spend two or three hours on a photo, make sure you do your spot removal at the very beginning or the very end. And next, I think what I will do here is go ahead and create a vignette. So you could just use a vignette slider, but I prefer to make a totally custom vignette, which is going to be so helpful and it's they look so much better than the vignette slider. So how I do that is I'll go ahead and create a new group over here. I'll call this vignette. And I'm going to create two layers. Uh, layer one is going to be our brighten. Layer two is going to be our darken. So in, on my vignettes, I actually brighten the center of the photo and darken the edges to really help bring my viewer's eye into the middle. So what I'm going to do here is grab my elliptical marquee tool. I like to call it the circle selector. Um, but you can find that somewhere on your toolbar here. And I like to click and drag from the center. Now you'll notice that the circle drags out from that center point, which is not ideal. If you hold alt option, it will create from the center. So um, grab a circle about this size 
or so, you can change it um, and try different things on your photos. But you can actually then click and drag the circle to the center. Sometimes it will give you the lines like you see here. Sometimes it won't, but it will snap. So you can see I'm snapped to the center here and it won't move anymore. And the next thing that I want to do is go up to select, modify, and feather. We're going to feather by 1000 pixels to make this a very, very soft vignette. And then we're going to go to edit, fill, and we are going to fill with white. Uh, blend, blending is normal on 100%. We'll go ahead and change the blend mode over here to soft light and drop this to 20%. And if you don't understand blend modes yet, don't worry. Uh, I'm not going to waste your time explaining it. It's not too important for this tutorial. Just know that uh, you want to use soft light to create this uh, inner glow here. Um, and then I'm going to go ahead and click on the other layer. That's going to be our darken layer. And I'm going to go up to select inverse because I want to select the outside of the photo, not the inside circle for the vignette. Then I'm going to go to edit, fill, and we will fill with black. And then I can click command D to deselect. Now you can see my vignette is on there now and it looks absolutely awful. Go ahead and change the blend mode to overlay. And then we're actually going to warp this, this vignette out, which is going to look really nice. So I'm going to hit command T or control T on a PC. Then I'm going to do control click and I'm going to go down to warp. This is going to allow me to warp this vignette to create it totally custom how I want. So I'm, of course, going to drag out the edges here and make it not so dark. And bring out the sides here. And now I want to think about where the light's coming from. So the light's coming from the left. So I don't want the left side to be really dark because that's where the light's coming from. So I want to drag out my vignette so it's not darkening that left side. But I am okay with darkening the clouds and the foreground. And this right side of the image is okay to be darker. You can grab the handles. You can click and drag on the vignette itself. Uh, it's totally up to you how you want to do this. But I just do this to taste. And you can zoom back in. And that's looking pretty good. Let's go ahead and hit enter. And we will let this load out. And then you can actually toggle this vignette on and off to see what it's done for your photo. Like I said before, the reason why I do this is because it's really going to help us bring the viewer's eye to the center of the photo. You can see it puts a really nice finishing touch. Right now you kind of don't know where to look, whereas with this vignette it's very obvious that this is the subject of the scene. So that is how I would build that custom vignette. Last thing that I want to do here is I just want to go in and do a little bit of sharpening. Super easy. Um, what we're going to do here is Command, Alt, Option, Shift, and E. And this is called the merge visible. It's meaning we're merging all the layers below into one stamped layer on the top. Again, that's command, alt, option, shift, and E. And alt, option is one button. On a PC, I believe it might just be alt. But on a Mac, it says alt, option. We can call this here a smart sh sharpen. And we're going to go up to select. Or I'm sorry, we're going to go to filter. We're going to go to sharpen. And we're going to go to smart sharpen. And now what we can do here um, is we can actually either zoom in on the photo or uh, we can use this little box that it gives us and click on a high contrast edge like this one. And by clicking, it will pop up in this box over here. You can see right there. So now if I preview on and off, it will toggle. Now, one thing that I've noticed about this preview is as you can see, it's very slow loading. So I usually like to start with settings like this, and then I will toggle it down here once I load it out. Um, I do usually find that on a daytime photo that's shot at a low ISO, that 19-ish, I'd say 20-ish percent is good for the reduced noise, uh, 0.5 for the radius, and then somewhere between 100 and 400 percent amount. I usually do a higher amount, and then if it's too much, I'll go ahead and reduce the opacity on this Smart Sharpen layer. Go ahead and let that load out there. Okay, and once this is loaded out, what we're going to do is zoom in. I'm going to use Command Plus to zoom in. And I want to zoom into a high contrast edge such as this one. We're going to toggle that. And you can see how this really brings out this edge and reduces the noise in the sky, which is perfect. That's why I love the Smart Sharpen, um, and it looks great. I am not actually going to reduce the opacity on this, but if you find that you're creating some haloing or white edges, you can actually go in and reduce the opacity so that that does not happen. Um, but this looks good on my photo. So that's really the last thing I do. Um, 
if I noticed anything else, like perhaps I thought these oranges were too bright, um, I could go into hue saturation and select my oranges here using this color dropper tool again, and I could reduce the saturation or do something at the very end. Um, however, I think that this photo looks fine the way it is. Um, but if you're newer to Photoshop, you may go back and change things and that's totally okay to create more layers on the top. But in terms of Photoshop workflows, this is a really simple way that you can adjust your photo here. Start with a smart object, uh, do camera raw on one, then go to color balance, hue, saturation, curves, fix up your photo there, do any spot removal, do a vignette, and then a smart sharpen. And I think that you will be looking really good in terms of that. So that really wraps up my basic Photoshop workflow. Of course, there is more advanced techniques that I'm sometimes using on other photos, but this is the basics, what I use in every single photo that I edit. Thank you guys so much for checking out this week's video. Really hope that it was helpful. Of course, come back, rewatch it as many times as you need to. Do this on all of your own photos, and I promise you this will help you get started in Photoshop if you're having a hard time, or it'll give you a little bit more direction if you're not quite sure what to do once you get in Photoshop. Thank you guys so much for checking out this week's video. Please make sure to like and subscribe. If you guys have anything that you're wondering about landscape photography that you want me to create a tutorial on, please let me know down below in the comments or email me. Um, thank you guys so much and we'll see you guys next time.